Hi everyone, let's talk about Euler's characteristic formula for planar graphs. Let's say we have a graph. I'm just going to draw a particular example. This one is going to be looking like a pentagon. And we have, so those are the vertices, we have these edges. We'll, we'll add an extra one over here. So suppose these, this is the graph then we have that the number of vertices is 5, the number of edges is 6, and the number of faces, if we study it, we have one face here, one face over here, but the number of faces is actually 3 because we also have the unbounded face out on the outside. So there's two bounded faces plus one unbounded face and that means the total number of faces is equal to three. So the formula or result that we get in this case is that V minus E plus F is equal to five minus six plus three and that's equal to two. And it turns out that for any planar graph that is connected this computation always yields 2 and that's called the Euler characteristic of planar graphs and we're going to be deriving this formula so in general for planar and connected simple graphs simple meaning it's not directed it's not infinite and it's not a multigraph it's just a simple graph for planar connected simple graphs v the number of vertices minus the number of edges plus the number of faces including the unbounded face is always equal to 2 and we're going to be proving this by induction so let's do induction on on induction on the number of edges which we'll call epsilon and epsilon is going to be greater than or equal to zero some integer greater than or equal to zero so the base case is not difficult in the base case epsilon equals to zero which means uh, since it's a connected graph the number of vertices is one so one vertex zero edges and just one face which is the unbounded face. And in that case we get that 1 minus 0 plus 1 is indeed equal to 2. So the base case holds. Now the induction hypothesis is that this result holds for some epsilon greater than or equal to 0. And now we have the inductive step. So say we have a uh, an appropriate graph. So with the, all those conditions that it's planar, connected, and simple. With epsilon plus one edges. Okay, so there's one extra edge and we're going to be getting rid of it somehow. What we're, what we're going to do is that we're going to break it up into two cases. Case one is that it is a tree. And a tree is equivalent to saying there are no cycles. Um, by cycle, I mean that something uh, like this, where you, you, can, you end up where you started. I'm sure you can look up a definition of graph cycles pretty much anywhere on the internet like Wikipedia. Now something interesting about trees is that the number of edges is equal to the number of vertices minus one. So just, just consider the sim one of the simplest possible graphs, this one we have three vertices and two 
edges. So that means that if there are epsilon plus one edges, that means there are epsilon plus two vertices. And since there are no cycles, there can't be any faces other than only the unbounded face. One. So we can do the computation very explicitly in this case. We get that V minus E plus F is equal to epsilon plus two minus epsilon plus one plus one and that's equal to two. So it does hold in the tree case. Now we're, that was the tree case here. So now we're gonna do case two, which is there exists a cycle because that's literally the opposite of being a tree. So what we'll do is that we'll say let v equal number of vertices of the graph, e equal number of edges, which is epsilon plus 1, and f equals the number of faces in this planar embedding because it can depend on uh, the particular embedding that, that we have in the plane of this graph. Now, what we're going to do is that we're going to remove an edge from the cycle. Remove any edge from the cycle because remember we're assuming that there exists a cycle. Uh, I'm not going to prove this, but there's something that holds true. One, the graph stays connected. And this is because uh, all the paths that go through the cycle, they can be rerouted. So I'll leave it to you to prove that, that it stays connected. And also it stays planar because we're just removing an edge. That doesn't affect the planarity of the embedding. Um, the 2v stays the same, so the number of vertices stays the same. 3, the number of edges becomes e minus 1. And 4, this is the critical part, f also becomes f minus 1. And I'll give you an example just to illustrate what I mean. Suppose we have a cycle like this then any particular edge on the cycle, and this is not true for in general, like you can have an edge like this that, that where both sides lie on the, on the same, uh, it's adjacent to the same face, but a, an edge of a cycle, on one side it has one face and on the other side it has another face. And if we were to remove it, so if we were to remove this surgically, then what happens is that this edge, it joins the two faces together. So we're, we're left with one less face. So because we have e minus one here, which is equal to epsilon, by the induction hypothesis, we find that we can use the induction hypothesis to say, they say that v minus e minus 1 plus f minus 1 is equal to 2. And this in turn implies that v minus e plus f is equal to 2. And that completes the induction. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.